Let's create a consistent golf swing in five easy steps. What's up guys, my name is Wade Fullingham. I wanna talk about my five steps to developing a consistent golf swing and building an easy golf swing. So we're gonna talk about the posture, we're gonna talk about the takeaway, we're gonna talk about the top, we're gonna to talk about impact, and then finally we're gonna talk about the release. All of these pieces are important. We're gonna show you how to fix common problems we see every day, and I'm gonna show you how to practice those and fix those things, so let's get into this. Step one is posture. Posture is huge to developing a big enough turn into the backswing, which is one of the things we don't see enough of in our clients is they don't turn very well. But a lot of it has to do with posture. So a lot of our clients come in here with a very rounded back like so, and it inhibits their ability to be able to rotate and make a big turn. So when you, dirt, when you have a rounded back like this, you can only turn so far, but if you get a nice flat back, all of a sudden that opens up your body because you can see here, that's it. I mean, really, that's it and then I get a nice flat back and all of a sudden I gain all this extra mobility. So here's how you get into that position. Take the club, put it on your hips like so, and then what I want you to do is I want you to pull your shoulders back, stand up nice and tall with your chest. I want you to push your rear end back, okay? And with your knees locked, so let me, I forgot to mention that, and then crack your knees and then drop your hands. That'll get your back in a nice flat position so that you will be able to make a big turn into the back. Step two is takeaway. We see the biggest problem in takeaway is the hands are working away from the body and the club's getting way behind us with an open club face. That's the most common. We do see other things that happen, but the most common problem we see is not a, a one-piece takeaway. So what a one-piece takeaway is, it means when you take the club back, the chest, the arms, and the hands move together. You're not moving the club head independently. So we see lots of people move that club head first. So they get a very narrow width of their takeaway. So basically the club head moves a lot, but the hands don't move a lot. We wanna see the hands move a lot, and we wanna see this width right here. So what we have to do is feel like we move the handle first, not the club head. Move the handle first, get a wide takeaway, and keep these arms as straight as long as possible. So that's right, just like this, wide takeaway, not narrow, wide. And then when we talk about positions of the club, we want the club to be out in front of us out here. We don't want it behind. Most people, the club drags, the hands go out like this and we end up with a wide open club face. So what we wanna do is we wanna feel like our chest turn brings the hands really close to your right thigh, but then we hinge the club and we keep it out here in front of us. And then the final piece is the angle of that face. We want the angle of the face facing down to the ground. We don't wanna open it. This is square, okay? This would be closed, square. That would be open, toe up. So we want the hands really close to our right thigh here. We want the club in front of us and the face down. That'll get your club face square so it's not open. So fix that position, make it a one piece takeaway, and that'll lead us on to the next step. Real quick, I wanna offer you a free course. It's my three keys to developing a consistent golf swing. It's on this same topic. It goes a little bit into more depth about what we're talking about here. If you wanna dive a little deeper, wanna work on that these motions a little bit in more detail, check out this free course. It's in the link in the description. I promise it'll take this video, what we're talking about in this video, to the next level. Step three is the top of your golf swing. So what we see the most is most clients take the club back with their arms, what we talked about in the takeaway, and they get the club too far up in front of their face and they don't create depth. Now depth is how far the hands are behind us. The further you get the hands behind you, the easier it is to come from the inside. So if you're an over the top guy, then we need to make sure those hands are getting deep. Now, if you're not an over the top guy and you get stuck underneath, you could be your hands too could be too far back or you could just be getting stuck underneath. But we're not gonna talk about that. The most common we see is we see the hands not getting far enough behind us. So when you do your takeaway, we talked about opening that chest, getting a wide turn, 
And then we're gonna talk about making a big shoulder turn because of that good posture so that we can get the hands deeper behind us. So what we're looking for is if we draw a straight line down from our hands to the ground, you're gonna see that it's on our back heel, right? So when you go back there, you're gonna see that it's on your back heel instead of up here by your toes. That's really important so when it comes to creating a shallow downswing and not a steep downswing so we can hit the ball from the inside or at least not come over the top and be steep on the ball. The next thing I'll say at the top is making sure we pay attention to wrist angles. The one thing I would say, there's not one way to do it, but the biggest problem we see is too much extension of the lead wrist. So this is flexion, this is extension. So they get to the top and they get in a lot of extension, they get across the line. We wanna make sure that lead wrist is nice and flat. It can have a little bit of extension, but we don't want anything super excessive. So if you look at the top of your swing and you notice you have an excessive amount of extension in your lead wrist, then you need to get that closer to as flat as you can. You can have a little bit, there are good players that have a little bit of extension like Justin Thomas, but we wanted to get that as flat as possible. So let's get a wide, big turn, get the hands deeper, and let's get those wrists a little bit, or your lead wrist a little bit flatter. All right, here's the big one. Let's talk about impact. So impact, we wanna get this nice forward shaft lean at impact where the hands are for, hips are open, chest are open. So there's a lot to this, but I'm gonna give you a basic understanding of how to get into a good impact position, and I'm gonna show you a couple of drills to do. So here's what, I'm, here's what good impact leads to. When you look at the relationship of your lead arm and your chest, the best players in the world, number one, don't get it trapped across your chest at the top of their swing. They're maintaining that 90 degree angle all the way to the top, but then on the downswing, that angle actually gets bigger, and this lead arm's trying to get off the body. Too many of our players get to the top of their swing and they lose too much of that angle already, but then when they come down, they never get that angle off the body and they look like they're scooping like this because they never get that lead arm off the body and extending. So I'm gonna show you a drill, two drills really, on how to start getting that forward shaft lean at impact. So the first one's called the paddle drill. Take your lead hand, narrow stance, Give me a little bit of forward press. You're gonna put your right hand on the club like so. You're gonna take a short backswing to here. You're gonna come into impact. This hand's gonna stop and this hand's gonna keep going. It's a tough drill to make good contact. I would do something with a little bit of loft like a nine iron, but your goal on video records yourself and you're gonna notice when you do this drill, if this hand stops at impact and this hand keeps going, you're gonna see a lot of forward shaft lean at impact. Okay, so if you're able to get that forward shaft lean and impact just with that lead arm, then you just gotta figure out how to get the rest of your body to move with that. So I want you to hit a couple balls. The goal really isn't solid contact here. It's a hard drill already, but it's what you're looking for on video. Short and through, okay? Hit you a few shots, record those. Look at how your lead arm is pulling and extending off that body. And then what I want you to do is I want you to do two hands on it. And you're gonna keep that same feeling of the lead arm pulling through and turning into your finish. So just like this, you're gonna go here, short, boom. You're gonna to try to get this lead arm to feel like it's pulling off. And you're gonna hit some shots and you're gonna record it on video and try to get your lead arm on your left thigh. So when you get an impact, you wanna see it on that left thigh. That'll make a big difference in your crispness of your contact. Fix that and you'll see a huge improvement in your ball strike. If you like this video so far, please consider subscribing. Also, please hit the thumbs up that helps other people see my video. Hit the notification bell so that you can be reminded when I post new videos. Let's get back to it. My final step is the release of the club. So how you release the club is really important to being shallow through the impact zone, creating speed, and creating a consistent face through impact. The best, pe best players in the world release the club as if you had a horizontal plane like this. The toe stays up in there the whole swing, okay? It doesn't roll down like this. This is, it works, you can play golf this way, but it's the hardest way to control the face, okay? You're gonna have a hard time controlling that face if you're rolling it over. So the best players in the world release it with the toe square like this. So when you come through the hit zone, I'm gonna face you here, 
we want to release that club with the face matching our spine. Now, some players have the toe more down, okay? But it's not because they're rolling the forearms. It's a product of wrist angle. So if I have more flexion coming through and then I release it, that the face is going to be more that way. But they're still not having this rolling pattern. They have a release pattern as if I was going to underhand toss a bag, like if you're playing cornhole. Okay, you're not gonna play cornhole like this. Well, first of all, you aim this way, but let's just say you were gonna throw it like this. You wouldn't roll your hand, you're gonna go underneath. And so if you watch my palm, it's releasing square with my spine, it's not rolling. So what I want you to do is come up here and hit some balls, and I want you to visualize that face exiting, matching your spine, instead of rolling down. Okay, go slow, hit some easy shots. The ball should come out pretty straight. Okay, but that way you're getting rid of that nasty release pattern and you're not seeing the face aim down. If you see it aim down like this, you know you rolled the club too hard, okay? So hit a few shots and you'll be able to see that ball exit a lot straighter every single time.